What's going on guys? My name is Max and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how you can get awesome car photos just by following a few simple tips and tricks. Today I'll be walking you through a logical process that I take with every client and photo shoot that I have so you'll be able to take these tips and kill it at your next photo shoot. To start things off, a great idea to implement before your next photo shoot is to research the car that you'll be shooting. For a lot of exotic and tuned cars, there can be so many hidden details around the car and by capturing them, you are able to share with your audience something new that they don't get to see every day. And let's face it, it's not every day that we're going to be around these cars, so it's very well possible that we'll skip out on these details. My suggestion? It's as simple as watching a review video on YouTube, scrolling through Instagram, or even a quick Google search. How this will help you is by getting the creative juices going in thinking about what details to capture, the location to choose, and maybe even the time of day. Now the next thing that you're going to want to do is determine what lighting you want for your photos. Do you want bright, dark, sunset photos. Knowing the timing of your shoot will help in determining where you choose to take photos. For example, if you were asked to take photos during the nighttime, not every spot would be ideal since you would need an area that has a significant amount of lights to make it bright enough to light your subject. In the location that you're seeing right now, I wouldn't even be able to shoot this at night because there are no street lights in sight. This will make it completely dark, so I will have to bring my own lights to the shoot. Alright guys, so as you can see, I have a beautiful location here where nobody's around, so I can feel very comfortable walking around from far distances and taking shots of the car. I also have a great background that's going to add some color to all of my shots. I don't really have too much of a colorful car other than the black and the red and you know the steel rims so having this graffiti in the background will work great. So I just wanted to also mention that another great way to find places is by actually using the Google Street View and uh, you can do that just by going to Google Maps. I like to use the satellite image just to take an overview of what an area is like. Um, say if I wanted to be shooting by the water I could go towards the lake area and just look for maybe some dead-end streets which I tend to try to go for or like a parking lot like something like this and I can see right here that you got kind of like a dock here uh, the water in the background so this might be actually a viable place for me to go so I'll take the Google Street View guy plop him down and take a look what it looks like so as I can see here uh, I got a lot of space to work with. It doesn't look like it's that busy, but we don't know when this was taken. But I could have an opportunity to shoot right here, have the car towards the water, something like that. Now this is good for finding the locations, but also seeing the accessibility. So sometimes I find peculiar spots and I really want to see like if I'd be able to get a car to go through there. Uh, so I'll be able to identify if there's maybe like a gate here um, which could potentially put a roadblock on my plans to have a photo shoot with somebody. Because you want to figure out as much of these things beforehand uh, before you actually get to the shoot. No matter where I go, you can always catch me with a tripod, an extra battery, a CPL filter, and a backpack to carry all of my lenses and accessories. The two most important pieces of equipment to me are the CPL filter and the tripod. The CPL filter is essential to get rid of those reflections and you'll see it later on in the video. And the tripod will help to steady your shot and get some crisp, crisp photos. Now if you've taken the time to research the car that you'll be shooting, this research will come to help you in identifying the small unique details that will bring your photo set home. Some of the most common details to capture are the emblems, 
the headlights, and any sharp edges that the car has. Try taking these photos from different angles to get the best effect and also maximize the number of photos you're able to deliver. When you're shooting any car, try and make sure that the wheels are either straight or at various quarter turns away from you. You want to see more of the wheels themselves than the tire, so have the owner angle them from the position that you are in. Now a huge advantage that a DSLR camera will have over a smartphone over some of the obvious is that it has the ability to equip a CPL filter. A circular polarizing filter, or CPL, helps to reduce the reflection that the light tends to create on the body of the car, especially one with a glossy finish. It can cut through the reflections on the hood, windshields, pretty much anything. All you have to do is rotate the filter to your liking until most or all of the reflections are gone. You can even take this one step further by stacking the photos to get the most out of the filter. For the one I use, it's a cheap one from Amazon and it seems to do the job quite well. A huge benefit you have shooting at a discrete location is that it offers a lot of space and this is where you'll be able to experiment taking photos at different angles, different heights, and even the distance away from the car. Now when I'm on a photo shoot, I usually tend to shoot a lot in portrait mode because I know I'm going to be sharing a lot of them on Instagram. So my advice to you is to get comfortable with the car, try shooting at various different heights, angles, and distances because it'll all vary depending on the lens that you're using and the location that you're shooting at. As a person with not the greatest eyesight, I tend to use the manual focus, live view mode, and the zoom to dial in the focus to the right area that I want and get the sharpest shots possible. This method is good for frames where the car is not moving, so I can set up on the tripod, but if your subject might be moving, I would suggest switching to autofocus and the viewfinder as that'll be your best bet. I also enabled the grid in the live view mode so this will help me to get the best composition for each of my photos. If the car you're shooting is dirty, the shots you will get will definitely be less attractive than if it had been cleaned. I highly suggest asking the owner to go for a quick wash before showing up to get rid of any dust, dirt, or bugs that might be found on the car. In fact, it would probably be a good idea to bring a microfiber towel and maybe even a spray just so that you can take off any little marks or dirt that starts to appear on the car as a result of being around that location that you're shooting at. Learning from experience, there was one shoot that I did where one of part of the bumper had a bit of dirt on it and it was noticeable across all of the images I shot. So it ended up making my editing time so much longer because I had to clean up each photo where it was visible. Now something that's commonly missed is getting shots of the car with the headlights and taillights turned on. Having them on can quickly improve the lighting in your scene depending on where you are and give more definition to the vehicle. If you're shooting with somebody else, Ask that person to hold the brake while you take some shots from the back. Don't have someone to shoot with you? Use your tripod to hold down the brake while it's pressed up against the seat. Lastly, I want to leave you with two pieces of advice. First tip is that in order to have a successful photo shoot, you will have to exert confidence in yourself. When I first started taking photos of other people's cars, I would be a bit hesitant and shy to ask people to move their car in a certain way. That wasn't until I saw the amazing results you can get by having the car positioned correctly to get a perfectly composed photo. And the very last piece of advice is that in order to take better car photos, you have to consistently be taking photos. After each photo shoot, take some time to reflect on what went well and how things could have gone better. Write that down somewhere that you can quickly reference and look through before your next photo shoot. Remember that it'll take a much longer time to get better car photos if you're shooting only once every couple weeks versus once every few days. 
Okay guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video on how to take some awesome car photos. I hope you were able to take away a few tips from this video and will be able to apply it into your next photo shoot. If you have any car photography related questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and I will answer all of them. If you want to see more photo photos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot guys and I'll see you in my next video.